You can practice calligraphy on plain copy paper, but that means you have to take the time to draw lines or go blind using a light table. Or you could try a different option. Hey everyone, CJ Carter here with a short review of a paper that deserves some attention. It's generically called layout paper, but it's commonly found labeled as marker paper. This pad has paper that is 9 by 12 inches at 18 pounds, or 22 by 9 centimeters by 13.5 centimeters at 70 grams per square meter, or GSM. You can find these in other sizes as well. This paper has two key features that make it one of the options you should consider for practicing calligraphy. First, as you can see, it's translucent. This means that instead of having to draw guidelines or use a light table, you can simply place it over a guideline sheet and see your lines in ordinary room light. The other advantage is that this paper doesn't let ink bleed through very easily. As you can see here, I have a Sharpie pen, and most people know that Sharpies are really notorious for bleeding through paper. But as you can see, there is no bleed through. It wants to. It's really close. But even after going over it numerous times, it has resisted it. But this isn't about just bleed through. This is about writing. I'm going to write a few words with a pointed pen to give you an idea how the paper performs. I'm using a Gelat Rio 3 nib and Best Bottle Sumi ink. The nib is flexible and gives very good hairlines. The zinc is one of my go-tos as it stands up to erasing very well and gives a solid black. On this paper, because it doesn't help draw as much ink from the nib as regular paper, the ink-nib combo can lose capillary flow when you shift from a hairline upstroke to a flexed downstroke. As you can see, keep in mind that I'm using an ink that will exhibit this behavior. Many other inks do not. And I apologize for the poor handwriting. It just so happens I have a camera right in my field of view. The ink I'm using for this demonstration is Best Bottle. It's a Sumi ink. It doesn't normally have this little label here. That was for a different purpose. I think the reason it's more problematic is that it has a little bit more water content than some other inks. An ink that is easier to find and works excellently with this paper is Noodler's Anti-Feather. is isn't actually going to say Anti-Feather. You have to kind of recognize this with the uh, crossed out feather. It's also called X feather. Another excellent ink that I've tried out on this is Pelican Touche A or Touche A. It's uh, black. It's a very good drawing ink. And uh, one of the reasons that both the Pelican and the Noodler's Anti Feather work so well on this paper is that these are designed to kind of lay on top of the paper until they evaporate their water instead of kind of relying on being absorbed in. So these are a little less dependent upon capillary action for them to do their job. And so they work very well on a paper that isn't all that absorbent. Many people think of broad edge nibs when they think of calligraphy. Here I'm using a Mitchell round hand one and a half with Noodler's X feather or anti feather ink. 
Let's start, uh, we'll just draw a few quick squares. And maybe something called a caudal. And that's actually not too bad for a quick demo. As you can see, you know, there can be some issues with startup. Especially as the nib gets drier. But these aren't especially unusual with broad edge nibs. And why don't we just draw in a really quick G. Just for fun. Overall, the paper performs well. This pen is a Pilot Parallel loaded with the same Sumi ink I used in the first writing sample. It's a somewhat broader nib than the Mitchell that I used, so this should give us a really good challenge for the paper. First, I'll start by drawing a few squares. And there are a few startup problems, but overall, it performs very, very well. Of course, I have to do the obligatory, at this point, coddle. So let's just get to that. These look so much better when you actually take the time to do them, which obviously I'm not doing here. And let's try to find a nice corner here. And we'll do a G just so that we can be kind of on the same page as with the first example. Overall, you can see that it performs very well, and except for the occasional startup issue, like we exhibited right here, there really is no problem writing with this pen any more than with a dip pen. If you remember to shake it before you start, like you kind of have to with a lot of broad edge nibs, it's not really a problem. So, there you have it. If you are aware of its quirks, marker or layout paper helps make a practice session easier. I find the Canson XL marker pad of 100 sheets to be an economical alternative when practicing your calligraphy. Of course, there are other brands and they likely work at a similar level. Canson, too, has another line. This is their artist line of marker paper. Its performance is nearly the same as the XL line. It does cost more. At the time I'm recording this, the XL pad costs 10 cents a sheet, while the artist pad costs 18. Still, it's a good value. If I couldn't find XL, I'd be happy picking up some of the artist series. But since I practice a fair amount and I can find it, I'll stick to the XL. 
Give it a try. You might be glad you did. And I'll see you next time. Yeah.